And although mom likely never intended that we actually buy a weekend home, my dad, a literal type, saved and planned and researched all the small towns north of San Francisco, preparing for the day when he would need to invest in our retreat. In the first couple of years after mom died, he watched me, his ice-blue eyes somehow both soft and probing. He would ask questions that required long answers, or at least longer than yes, no, or I don't care. The first time I answered one of these detailed questions with a vacant moan, too tired from swim practice and homework and the dull tedium of dealing with persistently dramatic friends, Dad called a real estate agent and demanded she find us the perfect weekend home in Healdsburg, California. We first saw it at an open house, shown by the local realtor who led us in with a wide smile and a tiny judgmental slant of her eyes toward our big city San Francisco agent. It was a four-bedroom, wood-shingled and sharply angled cabin, chronically damp and potentially moldy, tucked back into the shade of the woods and near a creek that would continually bubble outside my window. It was bigger than we needed, with more land than we could possibly maintain, and neither Dad nor I would realize at the time that the most important room in the house would be the library he would make for me inside my expansive closet. Nor could Dad have known that my whole world would end up next door, held in the palm of a skinny nerd named Elliot Lewis Petropolis. Now, Tuesday, October 3rd. If you drew a straight line from my apartment in San Francisco to Berkeley, it would only be ten and a half miles, but even in the best commuting window, it takes more than an hour without a car. I caught a bus at six this morning, I say, two BART lines and another bus. I look down at my watch, 7.30, not too bad. Sabrina wipes a smudge of foamy milk from her upper lip. As much as she understands my avoidance of cars, I know there's a part of her that thinks I should just power through it and get a Prius or Subaru like any other self-respecting Bay Area resident. Don't let anyone tell you you're not a saint. I really am. You made me leave my bubble but I say it with a smile and look down at her tiny daughter on my lap. I've only ever seen the Princess Vivian twice, and she seems to have doubled in size. Good thing you're worth it. I hold babies every day, but it never feels like this. Sabrina and I used to live across a dorm room from each other at Tufts. Then we moved into an apartment off campus before quasi-upgrading to a crumbling house during our respective graduate programs. By some magic, we both ended up on the West Coast in the Bay Area, and now Sabrina has a baby. That we are old enough now to be doing this, birthing children, breeding, is the weirdest feeling ever. I was up at 11 last night with this one, Sabrina says, looking at us fondly. Her smile turns wry at the edges. And two, and four, and six. Okay, you win. But to be fair... She smells better than most of the people on the bus. I plant a small kiss on Viv's head and tuck her more securely into the crook of my arm before carefully reaching for my coffee. The cup feels strange in my hand. It's ceramic, not a paper throwaway, or the enormous stainless steel travel mug Sean fills to the brim for me each morning, assuming, not incorrectly, that it takes a hulking dose of caffeine to get me ready to tackle the day. It's been forever since I had time to sit down with an actual mug and sip anything. You already look like a mama, Sabrina says, watching us from across the small cafe table. The benefit of working with babies all day. Sabrina is quiet for a breath, and I realize my mistake. Ground rule number one, never reference my job around mothers, especially new mothers. I can practically hear her heart stutter across the table from me. I don't know how you do it, she whispers. The sentence is a repeating chorus to my life right now. It seems to boggle my friends over and over again that I made the decision to go into pediatrics at UCSF in the critical care track. Without fail, I catch a flash of suspicion that maybe I'm missing an important tender bone, some maternal break that should prevent me from being able to routinely witness the suffering of sick kids. I give Sabrina my usual refrain of, someone needs to, then add, and I'm good at it. I bet you are. Now, pediatric neuro...